Hello friends, Dapper Driver here, and welcome, welcome back to some PTCGO. We are going to be doing some uh, Dawn Wings Necrozma action today. Uh, this card specifically, I'm, I was super excited about when it first came out in Ultra Prism. Just trying to get my hands on them as much as possible. Has the invasion ability once during your turn. Before you attack, this Pokemon is on your bench. You may switch it into your active Pokemon's position. Uh, that mixed with the retreat, it makes it kind of a, uh, can make it a one of in any deck that needs to be able to retreat. I believe Glissopod quickly grabbed it. Um, I don't know who else has actually latched on to Dawnwing's Necrozma GX as that, uh, old, old style of Keldeo EX where it rushed in and then retreated like you saw in the, um, the Mega Rayquaza decks. Uh, if you guys were playing at that point uh but that's what's good about the invasion ability we're going to be using it as a main attacker though i believe we were playing two in this deck uh we have dark flash is the main attack uh this damage isn't affected by resistance so it still hits zoroarchs for 120 damage despite the psychic resistance now on the other hand this has dark weakness and that is really terrible considering how many Zoroarks are at the t forefront of TCG. So we're going to have to find a way around that. But uh, we also have this Moon Eclipse GX. This attack, it, it basically works like a counter energy almost. You can only use this attack if you have more prizes remaining than your opponent's. Uh, it prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So as long as they can't uh, Guzma around it you should be able to be uh, have a turn of protection after using a moon eclipse which allows you to like two hit ko something else maybe maybe per maybe not uh but let's see what else do we have in this deck so along with our two i would say hyper rare dawn wings and the Cosmos, which are so pretty we are also be playing uh the baby dawn wings and the Cosma, the other ultra race the golf stream attack intrigues me so much if you have exactly six prize cards remaining, this attack does 20 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So, since we're basically we're basing this deck off of a another popular Ultra Beast that does really well in tournaments, and that is Buzzhole. We're basically we base this deck off of a Buzzhole Garbodor list, probably the most popular one out there of Andrew Mahone, and so we're taking that deck and kind of making it work for dawn rings necrozma so what we did we replaced the buzzles with necrozmas we replaced uh the carbinks with lunala prism star actually because it has a similar effect and then we also threw in a couple of uh, baby muse from fates collide so that we can use that step that uh replenish energy attack from lunala prism star but on a basic that does not take as much um and then sword of dawn is another a pretty big attack for us we're going to be discarding two energies from this pokemon but it does 130 which is not bad it's a little bit more than the uh the gx but it does it doesn't uh, ignore resistance so it's a little better against you know buzz holes uh or anything like that but a little worse against uh Zorax, which Dark Flash will do better for. Um, and then also, speaking of Zorax, what we have for Zorax is a Marshadow GX. So we're hoping that if we get three Psychic Energies on Marshadow, we can use any of our attacks, and Marshadow can beat down that uh, that Zorax for us with the Shadow Hunt ability. Now we are a little scared of Garbodors, but I think I think we be we'll be fine with or without it we do have some field blowers in order to take care of it um i believe so don't we did i not include field blowers that's okay so there is no field blowers but we have enough guzmas to be able to take out any garbodors that come our way and we're not super reliant on abilities we're just somewhat reliant on abilities so to continue we are playing giratina prism star if we're scared of the greninja matchup we could probably switch this out for the other giratina I don't know if it's going to show that up here. It's not. Because it's Giratina Prism Star. It's different. But I do have two. I don't need to. But speaking of that. We are playing this for its Chaotic Star uh, ability. Um, we have that and a Ninja Boy in here. So that 
if we have two psychic energies and we don't really have a way of getting rid of them easy, we want to get them on the field, we can Ultra Ball for a Giratina Prism Star, throw it down, Chaotic Star, and then Ninja Boy it to get it into something else. So with that Ninja Boy play, we want to have those two psychic energies, which almost sets up this guy and almost sets up this guy. And almost sets up anything we really need, so that's really what the point of Giratina and Prism Star is. So we can set some energy down and then put it back into the deck for another Chaotic Star later on. We have Lunala Prism Star, which is becoming my favorite. It has Full Moon Star, similar to Solgaleo Prism Star. It uh, gives you energy based on... I don't know what uh, Solgaleo's does necessarily, I haven't used it a lot. But we'll be using it next week, actually. But Full Moon Star for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, which can be up to uh, six Pokemon. Attach a Psychic Energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Now, this is an amazing attack, Full Moon Star. That is amazing. It's not two. It's up to as many as your opponent's Pokemon in play. So even with a Parallel City, which we play, they will still have three to four Pokemon in play. And that's four Psychic Energy that we can put on ourselves for Psy Storm. Does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon. That is a crazy good attack. I've finished off so many games with that. One of my most one of my most favorite things I've done with that attack actually is I had a Counter Energy on a Mew, and I was able to get two more Psychic Energies on it, and then just got the Mew up front and Psy Stormed. I don't remember what I knocked out, but it was something huge. It was something big. And we did like 300 damage to it. So it was probably something like a buzzhole that I was losing to. It was spreading damage well, and then I was able to Psy Storm with a Mew that was 50 HP, take the knockout, and I was just so happy about it. Uh, with that, we are also playing that, like I said, Mew. Mew! With the Memories of a Dawn, this attack, you can use the attacks of your basic Pokemon in play so what better place to use it than in a psychic deck right uh so what this is kind of replacing because we're replacing carving break with lunala prism star but we can only play one lunala prism star so we threw a couple mews in here that way you can attack it can utilize lunala prism stars attacks as well as any other basics that we play when we play a lot of basics so mew is very versatile in that has all those memories. We also are throwing in one Necrozma. We're kind of hoping that this kind of sways that Zorak match in our favor. We can Black Ray to get 100 damage. It does, it's not affected by weakness or resistance. So it's a base 100 damage. And then we can finish them off with Dawn Wings if we need to. It's really it's a really rough matchup with the Zoraks and considering they're everywhere. So we're really hoping for that Marsh Shadow to come through as well. And then Prismatic Burst is not a bad attack either. I think I originally had a Nihilogo in this spot. But, I mean, past its uh, confusion ability, and the hun base 120 attack and prevents a retreat was not helping too much. So I was rarely playing it over the Dawn Wings. So we ended up throwing the regular Necrozma in here. And it looks pretty in this uh, light anyways. So that's what we decided. And then also, I mean, this can do 60 more damage for each Psychic Energy you discard. We have three Psychic Energies on it. It's doing, you know, 60, 120, 180, plus 10, 190 damage. It's doing 190 damage with the Prismatic Burst if we have three Psychic Energies on it. And then we can bring it back with Lunala Prism Star. So Necrozma is looking in good form. And then even better once that Malamar comes out. Because that is crazy good attack right there. So, moving on. We are also playing a couple of Lele so that we can search out any specific supporters that we want or need. We're playing Wobbuffets because we were placing... We were playing, like I said, we were behind our basis off of that popular Buzzhole Garbodor list. So, with that, we are taking out Garbodor since it blocks all abilities and putting in Wobbuffet, which only blocks all abilities except for Psychic types. Now we may still struggle against something like Greninja Break, who blocks all abilities when it attacks us. But that's the main ability with this, is that we're playing two of these to replace those Garbodors, which gives us two extra spaces to be able to play things like that, um... Like those Mews and stuff. So that's the idea. So that is the Pokemon. We are going on with uh, three Max Elixirs. I thought we had four. No, we do have four. We do have four. 
four max elixirs because we play a total of uh, 11 energies and then two counter. The two counter is for the prison stars and the muse. We're not going to be putting them onto the GXs anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Playing two nest balls to get out our basics quickly. We don't really need a Bridget in this deck because we have nothing we have to evolve. Everything we're playing with is basically a basic, so so basic, right? Uh, <laughs> so we're playing nest balls over that. Ultra Ball we still need because we have a lot of effects that are play down from the hand, like Chaotic Star, like uh, Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag. So those one, those certain effects we're going to be using Ultra Ball for. Play two Feral Cities to mess up our opponent, limit their bent size so they don't have as much as they need to be able to beat us up. So that's what we have the Parallel City for. You can also reduce their damage if it's really a, a problem, which I don't think there's really a problem with any of those. Maybe the Ho-Oh matchup we would throw it, again, the opposite way. So they would do 20 less damage. Could let us survive the water matchup. I don't know who's doing water, I guess. Maybe Volcanion. But that would also be fire. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. It depends on the matchup. We were playing three Cynthia's because a general draw support. We don't have a lot we want to throw away. Um, our shadow we're going to be kind of keeping in the background until we absolutely need it. We're playing four Guzmas, like I said. We want to be able to take out exactly what we want to take out with a lot of buzz hole in the format. We're hoping to Guzma out buzz holes and one-shot them. That's really the idea behind this. Playing one Lily because if we have no other draw supporter that first turn, Lily can get us the most cards. Um, but I didn't want to, like, overextend too many slots for Lily, so we only going with one. Two in for that general draw support. It can also disrupt our opponent if they are getting ahead. One Ninja Boy for those plays. If you guys knew when Ninja Boy came out, you would understand what those plays means. Ninja Boy was popular for a half a sec because it was able to you were able to take damage with a Pokemon Ninja Boy into a Tauros and then shoot that damage back. That was the most popular GX attack when Ninja Boy and the first Sun and Moon set came out. Four Sycamore for those strong draws. I mean, there might be a, an argument to switch the Sycamores with the end, but I kind of kept the majority of the same uh, support as that very popular uh, very popular Buzzhole deck. But let's uh, go down this way so we can see what the rest we have. We have one Choice Band, two Fighting Fury Belt, and four Float Stones. The four Float Stones is we're going to be primarily using Float Stone for anything. Uh, those other two are just for a little bit of numbers, number games. So Float Stone, we're going to be putting Float Stones on the Necrozma for sure. And they'll get Field Blowered off, and then we'll put more on there. We never want to run out of them, really. And then the uh, Fighting Fury Belt is, to, you know, we can put Prism Star at 200. We can put this one at 170. We can put more shadow at 190. We really want to bump the HP of some of these uh, basic mons. We can put uh, Necrozma at at 220. But also, what's better for Necrozma is probably a choice band because if it does 190 naturally, it can do 220 with the choice band, which is still not quite enough, is it? It would still be 10 shy of taking out a. Zork. So, I mean, I'm still questioning this one. But, I mean, another thing you can't forget is that Wobbuffet in itself is also a an attacker because it can do a secondary attack to be able to do double damage and just take it out. So there's the deck, guys. I will go ahead and copy it down to the clipboard so I can put it in the description. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check it out. So right now I call it Sham Wow Psychic. And we will have to save it because I had an extra space in there. Shamwell Psychic. Um, so there's a better name for it, I'm sure. Like, I don't know. It's, a Do it's Dawnwing's Necrozma and Necrozma. So maybe uh, Prismatic Necrozma Takeover. It should be the deck name. Uh, but who knows. But let's go ahead and see how it reacts in a match against... Looks like a Molga. X log times seven. 
X log times 7. What does that mean? We start with no basics. That's a surprise. We play a lot of basics. We're starting off with double dawn wings. Double dawn wings. And what are we playing? We're playing that Weavile. Playing that Weavile evil domination. And probably Zorak too. So this thing is going to wreck us. We're going to have to watch it because every... Every ability is worth double with this thing. So instantly I put two Dawn Wings out and it's double. It's going to knock us out. But I think we're just going to try to set up quickly and try to take uh, take control of the game that way. Yeah, so they got Hoopa, Zorark, and Sneasel. So this is a test. This is a test of like, okay, what can this deck actually do? Which is why I think I'm instantly going to grab... <laughs> I might instantly grab my shadow here, actually. Um, man, that is rough. Instantly against it. Yeah, I guess we're going to go Wild Buffet here. We're gonna go Lily, I think, this first turn. But that way they can't, um... They immediately do not have any abilities with, uh, by Baracle. We'll go ahead and, uh... Wow, that's a surprise we missed. Probably because we have two in our hand. So what to do here? What to do? Oh man, we're already in a tough spot because I'm not sure what to do. And then we have Hoopa on top of that. So we have to find a Mew or something to take out the Hoopa. And we can't utilize our my Shadow just yet. My Shadow is great for later on though. I think I'm going to Ultra Ball here, throw out the Marsh Shadow and the Cynthia to grab this Prism Star. Now I'm sure everyone's like, you're messing yourself up completely, and yes I am. thought I had a Rescue Stretcher in here, do I not? That is sad if I do not, because then I just tossed my only answer right there. But we'll throw down this. Put two energies on it. Ah, I did it wrong. I did it wrong like an idiot. Alright, so this is how you lose. Just so you know. This right here is exactly how you lose. Is do what I do. And you'll lose this matchup every single time. I can't believe I just did that. That was dumb. I did what you're supposed to. When you play this from your hand, you need to attach two psychic energies from your hand to it. I had the two psychic energies. I just didn't know it automatically selected them. Alright, there's a Mew. Mew might be able to help us here. And a counter energy, which we're not down in prizes yet, so counter energy is not going to be super useful. Might be able to throw it on Mew and attack, though. They're not utilizing any of their abilities just yet. So let's do it this way. And do a little bit more damage. With the Fighting Fury Belt. Um, I could Guzma around, but I kind of want to hit that. So... Yeah, none of this helps me.
should be able to use energy drive. Oh, it only has one energy, right? It only has one energy on it right now. That kind of prevents me from doing anything. Thought I had an attack, I don't. I'm just gonna have to wait behind Dawn Wings. Which is a terrible idea as well. Alright, I think this is this is just I'm terribly misplaying. We're gonna move on. We're just gonna move on. I'm not playing it right and we're we're misplaying and they just have massive type advantage. They have so many dark types out there. Here we go, this is a little better. We're facing off against a grass type with Mondo 777. Uh, we will be taking this through a tournament a little later. If we end up running into Zork in that tournament, we are just screwed. Um, I might look into a better Zor counter and I might try to throw a stretcher in this deck as well. Just because it's a, it's going to be a little better to have a stretcher. That way we have the ability to throw away more shadow. And bring it back if we need to. So this one's fun. We're going to put Mew out here first. Although I didn't check if we were going first or second. If we were going... If we were going second, I would have said... We should throw out the Wobbuffet first. But we're going first. Okay. So, we have all our energy now. Go ahead and Cynthia to get more energy and even more energy. Um, <laughs> so, we're going to retreat into Wobbuffet here. Get another energy onto Mew. And we're gonna float stone the Wombuffet. There's nothing else I can really do. Not the perfect start, but not a terrible start. They can't really do much except for Tapu Lele's here. With the Bide Baracle. And they just pass. Really, they're gonna just allow me to take out the grubbin and say, "Good riddance." Right, I need the the Tapu Lele's attack. All right, what do we have that could attack with two energy though? Anything. I don't know what that sound means. So I could just Ninja Boy. Um, there's nothing really to Ninja Boy. So. We're gonna go ahead and Sycamore here. See what else we can get out here. And I think that's everything we need. There we go. Beat. Beat up those, uh... Ah, uh, too, too many... Too many options. <laughs> too many options right there. But there, there is the power of Mio, by the way. And we'll be able to show this off a lot more in the tournament. Yeah, I believe that was Vikubulu. Yeah, and they just only drew a grubbin. That almost always means, like, if your opponent just starts being aggressive, they can knock you out, which is really all I had to do, was I needed to get a psychic energy and a basic. Ooh, nice! On our way to Sogaleo. Um, normally I wouldn't do three matches. Normally I'd just do one. 
but we're gonna see if we could do another match that shows off a little bit more of what the deck can do instead of just massive misplays. I've been able to perform well with this deck before. I don't want to make this too much longer either though, because it's already about 25 minutes. So we're going first again. Gives us a little bit of an option. Let's see. Ah, oh, we got the dreaded, dreaded Tapu Lele start. But it should be fine, because what we do Tapu Lele for is a Lily. Lele has two uses for most decks, and that is a first turn thing they need. This is weird because they're playing this Lucario over the other one. Um, first thing, first turn, what you need, and a late game Guzma is generally the two things you grab with Lele, and I just top deck them both. Um, let's go ahead and nest ball. <clears throat> Get our our uh, the face of the deck here. I believe that's the best option. Yeah, we're gonna get that. That way we can uh, float stone it. Oh, I can't believe we missed. Rip. Rip. We missed. And we could throw... Mm, we'll save it for later. Draw six cards. Really? I missed two max elixirs. I have tons of energy in there, though. Um, and that case I just put one energy down that doesn't make any sense though any sense at all once top of goes down we can throw more shadow down because then it can always use energy drive I got three of the four Guzmas right away that's a little rough so this one, we there we go. That that's how it happens though. You end up playing like against your weakness when you try to so showcase decks against a neutral deck, and then you play what's weak against you. So anytime I'm testing, that's what it happens, and it's like I need to play the what's weak against me the first one, so I know that the deck is flowing okay, and then then face against what's what you're weak to so you can kind of make adjustments to be able to flow okay but still counter your counter your direct counter um so this is a carbink lucario deck the question is are they playing a different lucario than the stance one that gives you a protection for a turn because i instantly think lucario means you're going to be getting a lucario So we can Brooklet here. We can't grab anything, but we can Brooklet. I can't believe how many energy we have in here. Eight. We missed both of those. We had nine in there, and we missed both of our max elixirs. Probability is messing with us. Um. So if I had another energy, I would totally just go in with Dark Flash and take out the uh, the baby Riolu. But we don't. So I guess I'm going to throw down the Marsh Shadow. I don't know. Should I Ninja Boy and grab a Mew? They don't really have abilities, it looks like. I don't know if this is the best choice, but it's the one I'm going to deal with right now. When you're stuck with three Guzmas, you, you, all you can really do is stall because you don't have a draw supporter. This carbink right now would be broken if it would block GXs as well. If they've had Nerada. Say, yeah, Carbink is actually going to block GXs as well. So we're playing, what, Pokey Poker Man 1987. So he's a little older than me. Getting another Carbink down. Has a massive hand. Are they going to be playing that? 
they have Floatstone, Lucario, they check out this Wobbuffet right now. Oh, it's also a fun thing with Fighting Fury Belt is to throw it on Wobbuffet, because then it gets 150 HP. And a lot of things cannot seem to hit this for 150 very easily. I found a lot of things come up just shy, um, primarily like Zoroax uh, and uh, Lycanrocks. They come up just shy. Like they normally can take out a Wobbuffet one hit, but with the Fighting Fury about it just protects it just enough. And it blocks their ability for one more turn. So he's really thinking this out like, oh, how can I get in a better spot here? And he's grabbing the Wishful Baton. Don't know about that. This deck is confusing me, and they're getting really slow starts today. A strong on that second Lucario. Interesting to know. Interesting to know. Now I could totally. Like energy drive. If I ninja boyed out a Mew over this uh, Dawn Wings. But I don't think that's really what we want to do. I don't want to throw away this many resources, but I think that the game is forcing my hand and making me have to. I hate it. I don't like it at all. Not at all do I like it. So we're going to take out Carbon Carry. So there's two things we found we might need is a Pal Pad and a, uh, a Rescue Stretcher. So I'll write those down as maybe something that we change before we go into a tournament mode with this question is do I have a pen near me yeah I'm gonna have to write that down because I like, that's, that's the thing with this you test it a little bit and you find out some things you need stretcher and uh, pal pad find a spot for each of those item cards in this deck will run a little bit better, have a few more things you can do, that way things like discarding two of your four Guzmas is not going to rack you. Okay, so this Lucar is going to have a, a turn of uh, protection here. That's what the stance means. Not everybody knows that, but when you play this Pokemon from your... Come on, Field Blower, get out of here. Yeah, so when you play this from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon doing him, you prevent all effects of opponent's attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon until the end of your opponent's next turn. So there we go, 100 damage took off my, uh, took out my, uh, stuff there. And these are going to be easy to take care of once I get rid of the carving break. So since we have, you know, 60 billion energy, we're gonna go ahead and put it onto more shadow. There we go, a Cynthia. See, I don't know why we're like missing elixirs, but you know, have a handful of energy. This thing can take us out next turn, but we should be able to use more shadow to utilize its attack. Um, unless there's something else I want to throw out there. I think I'm going to put out Wobbuffet for a turn. Oh, I needed that to hit. Needed that to hit. Um, Cynthia. I 
I got two of the things I needed. But looks like we're gonna have to leave Wobbuffet out there for a turn. That way we can attach energy, float stone, and go to town. Get them up in prizes for a moment, but then be able to come back. And they'll be able to have a secondary Lucario set up once this one goes down. Getting their carbings back, I think they want their energy from it. They play a secondary card bank? Or how'd they get one from the thing? Did they get both effects of that? That's fine. Play that other one. What do we want to do here? Probably. Another Dawnwings in the prizes. We don't have another one in the deck. So I guess we're safe to put the float stone here and then we're gonna end. That way we knock them down to three. And these max elixirs to hit. I wish I had something better here. Um so I could moon eclipse and protect myself next turn. They will have three energies on something. I think it's a little too early to try to pull that off though. So it might just be better to take the knockout here. And tie up the prizes. So right now he's deciding where to put his energy. Yeah, that's, that's half what it was expected. Still not sure if he has a another Lucario. The guy it looks like he's playing that game where he like evolves at the turn he needs it. Wow, that's a heavy hitting, heavy hitting real. Is he going after the Lucario break? No. Oh, Lucario GX. So Sycamore, digging down. Very different deck we're facing here. Fighting energy he's getting rid of. Did he hit what he needs? He hit the stance, so it does 160 damage. It's gonna take out the Marsh Shadow, nice. So that's a little problematic here. It's protected this turn. So I think we're kind of in a rough spot here. Nest Ball. Vanilla Prism Star, maybe. And we gotta prevent him from taking out our next thing. And he's already got the band on here. So that protection for a turn really helps him. I'm surprised he's just getting his energies out, though. So we'll do the most with this. Um, gonna need to put out, I think, the Necrozma. Yeah, those Gizmos here, they're hurting us right now. Right now, these these are hurting us. So can he take out the Prism? 20, 140, 160. I think he can. Yeah, he can take out the prism. Yikes. I should have put the fighting fury belt there, I guess. I should have thought better. We're super down in prizes though. Oh, what can you do? Yes, there's the attack. Right there. Thank you. Have to pay enough attention. That's right, it's protected. Okay. So I had the attack to beat it, but it's protected for a turn for stance. And with 100 damage on it from Tapu Lele, like, there's not much I could do. 160. Unless I put Necrozma up there to take a hit, 
game was lasting longer, but we're gonna finish it off there. We'll take it through a tournament, make a couple changes, put Stretcher, Palpat in there, and uh, hopefully play it better later. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. This has been Dapper Derby. I'll put you guys a Lola, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.